So, uh, this is the second time I'm recording this because the sound was turned off the first time. Whoops. Anyway, this is a, a loss where you did perfectly economically, which is the most important thing, and you did great with that. Um, but then you didn't make any bunkers, and you had a very small army at the point when he, he attacked you. So, um, the most common two Protoss attack times are seven minutes with about, um, 1,500 bucks, or eight minutes with about 2,500 bucks. So uh, if you tell yourself it's possible for Protoss to have a thousand or two thousand five hundred bucks at eight minutes, that means at eight minutes I have to have two thousand plus some bunkers, then you'll survive all of these sorts of early pushes. So as you can see, we're gonna go up to eight minutes, and uh, look, your army size is fifteen hundred plus stim, which is two hundred more, so seventeen hundred plus uh, siege mode, which is nineteen hundred. So at eight minutes, I think. And with 1900 bucks, you're just about strong enough to hold off a lot of the, the eight minute Protoss pushes, so that's great. But it's right here between eight minutes and 10 minutes that you're just gonna flatline, right? So uh, you want to have like 1500 bucks at seven minutes and 2000 bucks at eight minutes with bunkers. You don't have any bunkers, that's a big problem. Um, but then at 10 minutes, the benchmark is 3,500, so it's possible for Protoss to have 4,200. So to survive that, you have to have 3,500 of your own because you get kind of a defender's advantage, especially with uh, bunkers. And at 10 minutes, you had enough workers, which is awesome, but your army size is 1,700 plus siege mode and uh, stim. This isn't done yet. This hasn't been used yet. So even though, as you can see, your, your money is pretty low, you did a decent job spending your money, but you only have one tank, so the siege mode research is almost completely negated by the fact that there's only one tank, and it's not even sieged. So that's 200 bucks kind of wasted. Uh, the factory is somewhat wasted because it w was only used for a fraction of the portion that it was it was in the game. No bunkers is a huge, huge problem. I don't even think you could you could beat this even with an appropriately sized... I mean, you could beat this, but if you came with a bunch of zealots and sentries and you were on the low ground and you force fielded here and just walked into you with zealots, you, you wouldn't be able to survive even if you did have the biggest army you can possibly have at the time. There's just a... Uh, Protoss... It's, it's kind of like uh, uh, speedlings, right? If you're fighting against Speedling Baneling, even if you have a bigger, uh, slightly bigger army, you're going to lose if you just fight it with M&M &M toe to toe. There's certain upgrades and and stuff that's required, and a, and a certain critical mass of units is required before you can really fight Zealots or or Speedlings. They're just stronger than you. So luckily, in this game, he's coming with all Stalker Sentry, which is kind of a, a terrible, horrible, bad composition. So it should be pretty easy for you to mop up if your army is somewhat close to his in size. But unfortunately, it's not. You have uh, 16, 1700, and he has 3,250. So he has like 50 or 60 percent more than you, and that's just the end of the game. So uh, ways to make your army bigger at this point. First of all, uh, as I said, you should go into Yabbit and just play a bunch of times trying to get a $3,500 army size by 10 minutes. And until you can do that consistently, you're going to lose to these sorts of things every once in a while. And I mean, you just say that's okay. And when you lose to them, don't ask why. Just say, well, I obviously messed this up. I'll work on that. Um... But, uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted by the game, even though it's, you know, over. So let's just watch the end so I stop being distracted. Anyway, uh, after he kills you, I'm gonna go back. There we go. And just show where your money was kind of not being spent properly. Uh, so right here, this shouldn't be happening. Alright, so the build you're trying to do is a two racks, two racks fast expand into uh, four buildings and then six buildings. And I know that because in the other replay you sent, that's what you did, and, and you did it well. So I understand what you're trying to do here. Uh, it looks like racks, gas, orbital, just like everyone always does. And then as soon as this is done, making a marine, and then starting your second racks, and then starting the supply depot, that's all perfect. It worked out nice. Getting your orbital a little bit late, very late actually. You you really want to get your orbital as soon as your first racks finishes, and that'll delay your second racks a little bit, but that's fine, you know, it's better to have an orbital than to have a second racks. 
Uh, then after you've made the one marine to chase off any probe scouts that he sends to you, uh, you get add-ons. So you're supposed to get two add-ons and you only got one. And that's a big deal because two add-ons gives you uh, $500 worth of, of army spending out of those two buildings. Whereas one add-on and one no add-on is only, uh, is going to be three quarters as much army spending. This one's only 125 instead of 250. So it's even if you spend every moment that these buildings are alive producing the most expensive buildings you can you still won't have enough army spending but on top of that you're not producing the most expensive building if you have a racks with a tech lab building a marine it's basically as if it were a naked rack so right now you're producing an army size that is what you would have if you had two naked racks um, and that's you know pretty small quite small and that's why at six minutes instead of having one thousand or one thousand two hundred bucks you have uh, 650. So you can see 400, maybe 500 bucks short of of where you want to be. Also, this factory is reducing the amount of army you can make because uh, in order to get a factory all the way at five minutes when you got this factory, you pretty much had to not be constantly producing off of these two buildings. So uh, same same deal with this engineering bay. You don't really. I mean, it's. If you are worried about DTs, you can get an engineering bay at this time and say, okay, now I'm safe against DTs, and that's fine if that's what you want to do. Um, but it, it also decreases the potential army size that you have. Also, this ghost academy, there's not really enough gas coming out of your base to produce ghosts and tanks at this point in the game. Uh, you can see your gas is at zero, so until you have an excess of gas while s s using the buildings you have, you don't really want to build another gas-using structure. Uh, and this command center very late um, and more importantly you don't have any low ground bunkers so you're just kind of turtling in the high ground without bunkers at this point and I don't know I don't I don't like that I don't like that I either make high ground bunkers and turtle on the high ground which I think is very risky because then you can get contained and lose or what I like better see you had to kill your own turret that's more money wasted there's a turret here it's a turret here and a third turret gonna go up over here that's 300 bucks wasted uh, this this upgrade before you even know what's going on is is not going to complete in time, so that's kind of wasted money as well. And uh, these bunkers are going down at 10 minutes, and that's that's bad as well. So that's why even though your money is pretty low, your army size is so tiny when he shows up. So again, go into Yabbit and practice getting a $3,500 army size by 10 minutes. And when he comes with Sentry Stalker, uh, he's got $3,200. So if you had a $3,500 army of M&M against Sentry Stalker, you would have just dominated him. You would have crushed his face. And this would have been an easy victory for you. Um, yeah, so the engineering bays and turrets. Uh, either make an engineering bay and get an early upgrade and don't make the turrets until you need them. Or um, just don't make any cloak detection and say, if DTs come, I'll die. You know, that's fine too. I do that a lot. Um, or you can save up uh, a scan in case DTs come or whatever. But just in general, if he has five gateways, he's probably not going to also have DTs, you know, just generally, especially with, with only one base mining. Um, but you didn't know, know anything about what he has because you've never even tried to scout him. So also, we'll see this in the next game, but it's really important, especially in the very early game, that you send a marine down here and just put it over here to see when he gets an expansion at least. And every once in a while, you know, try to take one of these watchtowers or whatever, just to get a general idea of what he uses to kill that marine. Because the marine's only 50 bucks, and it's worth 50 bucks to find out what he's doing. You know, that's much cheaper than a $300 scan. So, uh, anyway, these bunkers really late. I would have liked to see also bad positioning, kind of. You're kind of turtling here, which just seeds this entire area. You could just come in and make sure you're not able to mine, and you'd be stuck over here. I guess it's okay because you have siege tanks, you know. You could push one up here and put your army here or whatever, but whatever. Um, the positioning I like for bunkers on this map are, like, uh, here and here to cut off this this approach and then if he uses this backside approach it's so risky for him because you can come up, come in and cut him off from being able to retreat that uh, most people just won't use that attack approach um yeah so uh two racks fast expand you really want to start that command center uh at 27 supply um, so your first two supply depots get you up to the ability to use 27 supply. 
Uh, get M&M out of your two racks up until 27 supply with SCVs pumping as well. And then throw down your command center. And then throw down a th your third supply depot after that. Um, and get low ground bunkers before five minutes. Uh, that's that's pretty important too. Because if you don't, if you're not on the low ground early, you, you might not be able to get there late. And that's what we saw in that game. You just were never really able to secure the low ground. Uh, that is all, dude. That is all.